Hi folks, as a job shop machine shop, I've got to get quotes done quickly, but also accurately. Let's walk through this template that we use. At the end, we'll come back through and walk through some of the mechanics and how you can customize this for your own shop. First thing I'll choose from the drop down are the three materials that we most often work with, aluminum, steel, or plastic, and which vendor are we looking to buy it from? Again, we try to stick to these four for us. Are we going to order it saw cut? When we started, we used to saw cut everything ourselves and we've now realized it's often much better to get a quote from your material supplier and have them saw cut it. What are the dimensions of the part? In this case, let's say it's a seven inch by two inch by half inch part. Now the big question that I used to spend so much time on is how many bars do I need to order if I'm going to saw cut it? So we've added a worksheet at the bottom called cut up a bar. This pulls in the 50 quantity that we would have put in here for the job quantity order and the part length of seven inches, which again was already put in here. If we wanna add, in this case, say 3 16 of an inch overall to the, to the length of the part when we go to saw cut it, that means our saw cut length will be this. And if our bars are normally 12 feet or 144 inches, that means we can get just barely 20 pieces per bar. That means we need three bars. We've gone through and added the formulas to do this. So this is rounding up. And the, the next most common question I always have is, well, how much extra am I ordering? And so this tells you, you've got about half that bar left over. That can help you decide, do you wanna change how precisely you saw cut it? Or maybe that will change your decision to buy it saw cut. I'll then pop in the total material cost quote and divided by the number of bars here gives me the price per bar. I highly recommend building a relationship with a metals supplier. We use mostly Alro and Yard, which are both national suppliers. We have a guide to buying aluminum, steel, and other raw materials on the website. And we also have an article on how to get started with a credit application, especially if you're a new machine shop, some tips and tricks on an important part of that process. Alro is great because if you go to myalro, Dot com. You click buy metals. We'll pick say a aluminum bars. 6061 extrusion is what we want. Flat. In this case, our A dimension was 0 0.5. B was two inches. And let's compare. We'll do 12 foot lengths. So if we ordered three of them, add to cart. $217.60, or let's see what we would cost. 6061 flat. This time we'll say one half by two, and let's order a custom cut. 57.125. Cut tolerance is important. You can say in this case, plus one eighth of an inch minus zero. Click add items to cart. Now you'll notice our price has changed because we've added more overall weight, but this can give you an idea of comparing the cost. You'll get a better price if you have a relationship with Alro or any metal supplier, but it's still a great starting point and it's free and no one has to bother you to get a quick price. We in most machine shops will mark the material up. How much depends on the nature of the job and how competitive you need to be, but wouldn't be uncommon to see something like a 25% markup. And that gives me this effective overall price, which is, What's my total material cost plus the markup divided by the quantity of pieces? After that, I'll go through, in this case, op one, two, three, four, five. So we saw cut it, we'll machine it, and then perhaps an outside service provider like anodizing or heat treating, and we can add in the appropriate prices there. This is not a full-blown, super detailed uh, quote, but rather this is a way to get through the information pretty quickly, make sure you're not gonna make a big mistake. What I like to do is I like to estimate, okay, I'd like to get $10 per part to machine that op, and I think it's gonna take me 10 minutes to do it. So that gives me a roughly, uh, an idea of roughly what's my implied hourly rate. Is it too low or is it too high? And then at the bottom, one-off items, like for instance, programming the part, soft jaws, any custom tools. That total added up, plus any shipping to say go to and from anodizing, gives me a total cost, which then divided by the quantity gives me a 
price per part fully baked, in this case, including shipping and handling. Focus here is on getting to a number quickly. You can take time to refine each one of these and really dial in. And that's something that's all the more important to do when it comes to larger jobs or jobs where you've got to be more competitive. A lot of times I need to understand, is this a $17 part or is a $47 part? Some notes on the mechanics of the Excel sheet. Take a look at the legend. Blue means it's an input cell. So that's something where you would type an input. Green it means it's a special link. So if we go over to cut up bar, you can see the 50 and the seven are green. That's because they're linked back. Quote template C21. So if I click on quote template and I look at C21, that links back to the quantity. That's the beauty of Excel. If you're interested in more, we've got an article and video coming on guide to using Microsoft Excel in the machine shop. It can be a really helpful tool. How did we make these fancy dropdown lists? It's actually really simple. If you look at the inputs worksheet, I have material, vendor, and saw cut. So let's edit this and let's add to material. Let's add stainless. Go back to our quote template and I'll go to data and it's called data validation. I'll click data validation and you can see it's got this source of inputs so all I need to do is delete that existing one and I'll click once on aluminum and drag a box down. And that's now said the input range is B5 to B8. So if you look, aluminum is B5 all the way down to B8. And you can see they call these little marching ants. The little box around it shows those four are all the options. And this is a really wet, good way of controlling the number of inputs and making it easier to pick things and avoid having to retype things. Let's walk through creating one of those from scratch. Let's say I wanted to add a field here that said priority. We'll go to inputs, priority, and I'll say rush, no, or ask customer. Back to the quote template. I'll click once where I want that drop down box to be. Data, data validation, and allow, change this any value to a list. I'll then click once in the source, come down to inputs. I'll click once on rush and I'll hold the left mouse down and I'll drag a box to all three options. This is just like what we did when we edited the materials a second ago. Click OK. And I've now created a drop down for priority rush, no, or ask customer. Last thing, we do so much with aluminum. I like staying conscious of the price per pound, and our material supplier doesn't always give us that information. So, what we've done here is based on the length, width, and height of how much you're buying uh, on the number of bars. This calculates the total poundage and divides it by the material cost to give us an effective price per pound. Uh, pretty simple based on the fact that aluminum weighs about 0 0.0975 pounds per cubic inch. That's a pretty high price. I like to see it well inside of, of, of 350, if not closer to 275, but aluminum does tend to fluctuate quite a bit. So it's helpful for us to keep that number in mind. The latest version of this quoting template will always be available to download on the NYC CNC website just below the video. You'll be able to click right here to download it. Thanks, folks.